Good morning everyone, this is Cindy from the Vintage Vignette. Um, if you've been a follower of my blog for any amount of time, you know how much I love beeswax. Well today I'm going to use beeswax to make a little wall hanging on a little canvas board. You can get these in the store for really, really cheap. They're not, this one's a 5x7, not very expensive. But before we get started, a couple things I want to tell you about beeswax. Um, you you want to be careful with beeswax because it is highly flammable. <laughs> I found that out quite by accident. But it's highly flammable. It ignites at 145 degrees. So you can melt it in a crock pot, a double boiler, several different things. But I find using, and of course my cord is stuck, the Sue's Weinberg melting pot works the best because it keeps the temperature at a good uh, stable setting so that it doesn't ignite and it also ha it stays in the container so you're not having to constantly watch um, tipping and spilling. But what I like about the melting pot is it's very simple to use and I won't go in through all of it but you just basically dump your beeswax pellets into it, set it to the uh, setting because you can also melt other things but set it to the beeswax setting and let it go. It comes very liquidy. It's very hot. You don't want to stick your finger in it because then you're going to be dancing all over the room in pain until you can get it off your finger. I've done that too. So there are several types of beeswax you can buy. A lot of people like to buy that brick style stuff that you can get in the craft store like Michael's or Joann's for candle making. But that brick is huge and you have to break it up into chunks and then get it into pieces that are going to fit into this melting pot and that's a pain. So I get the beeswax from Melt Art which is also a Ranger product made to go with the melting pot and it comes in natural and it comes in white. If you like to do the vintage stuff that I like to do the natural has a very nice yellow color to it that antiques very very well so you might want to stick with that but of course try different ones there's also some colorings you can add to it if you wanted to do a colored beeswax so let's get started I've got my canvas board here when you go to the store sometimes you can find these things they're called guest towels that are hand towels that you can use for when company comes over and they usually come in different patterns and sizes and prints. But basically, it's just a napkin. If you see, spread it out. It's just a nice little napkin. So what I do is I take my scissors and I cut out the size that I'm going to want on the little board. Like I said, you can use any napkin. You can even use tissue paper. You could use paper, regular scrapbook paper. The only thing I probably wouldn't use was cardstock because it's so thick that you might not get a good fit. But I, you know, if you'd like, if you can take the time, don't mind taking the time to play around with it, then hey, go for it. So after you get your napkin cut down to size. Trim the top on that a little bit better. You're gonna. Do I want that border on there? I don't think I want that purple border on there. But after you get it trimmed down to size, you want to flip it over. And you'll see that it's got that white backing on it. And of course, I took my acrylic nails off so I can't peel the thing off till I get my nails put back on. Anyway, let's flip it over and you can see that it has this white napkin backing. You want know, to just very, very, very carefully tear that off so you don't actually tear your napkin because then you gotta start it over. Okay. 
Okay, get rid of that. Now you see I have a very thin tissue paper like quality to your napkin. Okay, set that aside. Now normally what I would do is I would paint my board the color, a matching color, but since I'm using a darker um, beeswax today, then that's going to be my color, so I won't have to worry about adding any paint to that. So, let's get started. The one thing you want to consider when working with beeswax is have your melting pot or whatever you've got melting in close to you because you're going to need to work quickly. Because I, I'm telling you, let me see if I can show it, as soon as you take it out, it's already starting to harden. So, so you're going to take your beeswax and in nice even strokes, you're going to brush down. Try to get your brush pretty wet as you go down and even strokes are very important so that you're not left with gloppy ends or edges. See that? Move this over a bit. Okay, turn it around now so that you can get the other side just as evenly as you got first side. Another thing about beeswax is you want to work in a well ventilated room with a window open and possibly an overhead ceiling fan on because the fumes are very noxious. Noxious? Did I say that right? Noxious. Nox noxious. <laughs> and it has a very strong smell and you don't want to I mean, you want to remember that it's not something you probably should breathe for any length of time. So always try to have a window open and the fan on. Okay, now that we've got that direction going, I want to do some strokes across because you're laying right now. You're laying down texture. That's the thing you want to remember. Texture is the key. It's so funny. I don't know if you can hear that in the background. But it's early in the morning here. My husband and my dog are still asleep in there on the bed in the other room. And uh, we have a pug dog. They're the dog with the very flat face. And so they snore like humans. So they're both in there snoring side by side. And I don't know who's snoring louder. Maybe I'll have to get that on videotape one day. Pretty funny though. Sometimes I have to wake both of them up and tell them to turn over so I can sleep. Okay, so as you see, it's getting really thick. It's almost starting to look like butter, a buildup of butter. And that's what you want to see. I'll turn it. And we'll do one more layer this way. When your melting pot gets low, you can always add in more beeswax and put the lid on it, let it melt. But another little trick that I have learned is to put it in there. Well, maybe I shouldn't tell you this. This might be dangerous. <laughs> but put it in there and I turn the heat gun on it. Melt it quicker so that I'm not having to let my entire surface here dry before that melts. Okay. So as you can see, it's gotten very, very thick. And don't worry about those edges because we're going to take those off no problem. 